Okay, we're talking about the uniqueness of the Holy Spirit. The uniqueness of the Holy Spirit. And in that I give you the theme, the seven eyes of the Lord. You've heard about that in the Word of God. Amen? The seven eyes of the Lord. And um, hallelujah. So go with me please. Revelation 5. We're first going to read from verse 3. No one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep, see. Everybody say see. See, see the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw. Do not weep. See. Why am I prepared to see? Am I prepared to hear through the word of God? So many times God's saying, telling me to see. Telling me to see. If I can react on the word of God, I will see. See the line of Judah. Then I saw the lamb. Looking as if it has been slain. Standing at the center of the throne. Many times under the authority of God, God will say, see and look at my authority. I have the final say. And when by faith I obey, because of respect, I obey and I start to look. I start to see where is Christ? Where is the one with the final authority, the Lion of Judah? When you look at him, you will see the Lamb. The, the man said, look. See the lion. I looked and I saw the lion. No, I looked and I saw the lamb. What are we talking about when you take the authority of God and know that he has the final say, he is the lion of Judah. When you turn then to who he is, you will see the lamb. You will see him in a place of intimacy. Amen. Amen. Allow that. But let's go on. Standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures. And the elders, the lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. My brother and my sister, in the Trinity, there's not seven spirits in the context of seven persons of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit specifically revealed himself in certain ways. I know we talked about how the Holy Spirit can reveal himself as a wind blowing through. Where you don't see the wind, you see the impact of the wind. You see the impact of the Spirit, but you don't see the Spirit. You see the Holy Spirit as a fire. Yes, cleansing us. Amen. Consuming fire that will purify that what is from God and burn away that what is not from him. Hello, he's the living water. So many facets. He's the dove. But that is just symbolic for me to understand who is the Holy Spirit. Now I want to say we need to understand the uniqueness of the Spirit and how He wants to speak to me. We've seen in, even in the vision statements that we have in the church when Christ will build His church. Christ is building His church, the Son of God, as the Good Shepherd, as the Bread of Life. Yes, as the way, the truth, and the life, as the resurrection and the life, as the true vine, as the door of the sheep, as the light of the world. And in each of those facets, God wants to reveal himself. So even I could say uh, tomorrow morning, I had time with the light of the world. And he said the following. Or oh, you must be able to, to say, I had time with the good shepherd. And you know what he told me? I had time with the resurrection and the life. I, and I came from that place totally strengthened. But the one through the one who overcame death because Jesus revealed himself in that meeting with me in that time with me he had fellowship with me I with him but he revealed himself afresh as the resurrection and life it's not me knowing that he is the resurrection and life but how does he want to reveal himself how does he want to have a relationship with me as the resurrection and life are you with me 
So may God help you, may God help me to understand that. But even in all those seven facets, the Holy Spirit come in His uniqueness and reveal Himself in different ways to us. But through the Spirit, you will see what He sees. We spoke a few times, a few Sundays about that, that I am supposed to see what He is seeing. Okay, are you with me? So many times, hundreds of times that the word says, see, I'm coming. See, 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 the command, the command, the command. And then after that, God explains what you are supposed to see. God has a desire for you to see what he is seeing. Amen. And when you pray, it's one thing to pray. Say, God, help me with this circumstance. Help me with this uh, meeting. Help me with this challenge. Help me in this success, success. And help me in this failure. Help me in this fear help me in this shame help me in this whatever i go through that's good but you know in giving over that is only a prayer of i'm giving over to him and then in my prayer i'm supposed to pray according to what he is seeing god in my circumstances he has a purpose and there are certain things that he see He's seeing in my circumstances. And I'm supposed to pray according to what he is seeing. He's seeing that I'm supposed to have this impact. I'm supposed to be led by the Spirit and give this five words of encouragement to that, those people. To, to challenge this man about Jesus. To serve that guy with coffee. To, to help in this. To take a moment in the break time and pray. to Just to be at peace or just to be walking in love. Uh, just to be patient or whatever let's make a list of hundred things that god would want me to do to want me to be in a certain way tomorrow at the workplace or tomorrow day where i study but if i'm just telling god what to do and i'm not prepared to bring myself to the place to see what he is seeing what a waste of time in prayer may god help us the throne of God is the Lamb of God, the Son of God, but in and through Him, the Lamb of God saw through the Spirit. So in me and you, when we look at the Word, we must see the Word through the Spirit. Don't touch the Word if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to open your eyes, because it's the most dangerous book on earth. And you look at the, the word without the spirit, the letter kill. You will slaughter people. You will, you will condemn just yourself. The letter of the law, the curse of the law will be on you and on others. If I cannot see the word through the spirit, I need the eyes of God. I need to look how the father will look at the word and how the father will look through the word into what is happening out there. I need to do that. But that is the spirit how will i have the eyes of god have the spirit now you say yes i gave my life to christ yes the spirit of god is in me i'm the temple of the holy spirit that means i'm a living stone where god has an agenda through my life god has an agenda through your life that's the why the holy spirit is in you because you are supposed to understand as a living stone how to be built in the spiritual house for a specific purpose that god has for your life and at the end of the day that you as a living stone will be part of a body to become the home of God. Amen. Home of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Are you still here? Two. Okay. May God help us. Let's go to the next one. To the seven churches in the province of Asia. Uh, grace and peace to you from him who is, who was, and is to come. And from the seven spirits before his throne. What are we saying? God is revealing himself in the way that he wants to reveal himself. But for you to understand, to see him on the throne, to see the authority of God, to see the authority above the authority of your emotions, to see the authority above what people say about you, the way that people hurt you, and that how they hurt you, you gave it such authority, you gave that, you put that hurt, that words, what they said, how they belittled you, you give it a throne. And you put that word on that throne but there's the word on a throne he's called the word of god jesus christ he's called the truth 
So when I allow the truth, when I believe the truth, is me believing that Christ is on the throne. You believe the lies from the enemy, you put the lies on the throne. Don't give authority to the lies. Don't give authority to what the world says, to what performance says, and all this other stuff. Give authority to the truth. Because you believe Christ is on the throne. And you will honor him alone. Amen. You cannot see truth if it's not through the eyes of the Father. And that means through the Holy Spirit. In your situation, somewhere there's truth. Not about who's right and who's wrong. No. About God himself. Let's go. Zechariah 4.10 Who dares despise the day of small things since the seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zerubbabel. What are we talking about? How can you despise the day of small beginnings? What are we talking about? I can dream big. I have this vision. And it's a wow for that. A wow for when I accomplish this. When I have this hundred million. When I can do this. When I am that. When I have that position. When I have this opportunity. When I have this breakthrough. When I'm in Canaan. Uh-uh. How can you despise today the small beginnings? And the small beginning is not the beginning just of your business. The small things that are beautiful today. How dare you, how dare you, how dare you despise the beauty in today. That what you feel is not so significant. The beauty in your life. That what God has placed in you. The beauty in that flower, the beauty in the sunrise, the beauty in, in some small conversation with somebody where you could just encourage with one word that person. How dare you despise that moment. If you want to see that what God wants to do, and you see through the eyes of God, the seven eyes of God, especially is linked that it does not despise the beauty in small things. The beauty in small things. I only have this. Can you see the beauty in five loaves of bread and two fish and the potential of showing the glory of God? Hello. Can you see the potential in the, the Kiri of Moses, the, the staff? And what could happen? Hello, are, are you still with me? Now in that whole chapter, there's a focus on the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the uniqueness of the Holy Spirit. Is it not Zechariah 4, 6, everybody know that? Not by power, nor by might, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. You can do a lot of things in your strength. You can do a lot of things even in the strength of anger, in the strength of your capacity, in the strength of your personality, in the strength of your character, in the strength of a lot of things you can do. Even in the strength of the character that God has built in you. So because of your capacity, you have a certain capacity to do, but you're not supposed to unlock that capacity and just go with it. You're supposed to be led by the Spirit. Oh man, you have the capacity of the V8 engine, and therefore there you go. That will be very stupid. If it's not under the guidance, when the road turn, you need to turn. Otherwise, with your capacity, you're going to crash. Even though you had this amazing capacity, you just crashed. Why? Because you could not see the road. You could not see and understand where you need to turn, where you need to slow down. Because you could evaluate, because you could see what must happen. I'm not talking about seeing everything so that you can be in control. Ah, uh ah. -uh. God will make sure that does not happen. But there's such a lot that God wants you to see. That I challenge you that here at the end of the year, you go and sit with God and say, God, help me to see that what you are seeing, that what you want me to see about next year. Because you have given me the Spirit of God and the sevenfold Spirit of God, the seven facets, the seven eyes of God is in me. Let's say the seven eyes of God the Father is in my spirit. Well, you remember that. Because there's an eye, they call the eye of the tiger. Well, yeah, that's your song, man. Oh. There's the eye of the snake. There's the eye of stress. There's the eye of fear. You know, you come in a situation 
and that person has an issue with you. Doesn't matter what you do, you're going to do something wrong. Finish. Finish, finish, finish. When you're in a situation and you're, you have fear in your heart, there will definitely be something to confirm your fear. You look through the eye of stress, there will be definitely something to stress about. But you look through the eyes of the Father, there will be definitely something to give God the glory for, to honor Him, to thank Him, to worship Him. That's your choice. But it only depends what spirit is coming close to you. Like we said there at the table, the previous teachings that we gave, please go and look at it. Go and look at it. Rejoice. They rejoice, they rejoice when they see the chosen capstone. What are we talking about? Even in that place where he said, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And then he says, who are you, you mountain? You will become a plain. Speaking to the mountain. It's like, how dare you come and think you will intimidate me? This mountain will become a plain. plain. That crisis in your life, there is no crisis. There, that problem, there is no problem. Oh, it's all gone. No, it's a challenge. <laughs> there are some challenges, yes. There's some challenges that we face. There's definitely mountains. But what do you speak forth under the guidance of the Spirit? It's because you don't see, first of all, the mountain. You see what God is seeing. Amen. And then that man, that scripture says, the work that was started through the hands of that man, that guy will finish the work. What God has put you for here on the earth if it's still one day one hour one year 10 40 50 years for you on earth you will accomplish what god has sent you for to be here now on earth and why you didn't die yesterday because he has a certain calling certain purpose for you here on earth and you will finish it if 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 not by power nor my mind but by my spirit if you understand the sevenfold eyes of God. The seven eyes of God. Looking at life in a certain way. Looking at tomorrow. In, looking at your job. Looking at your relationships in a certain way. The seven eyes of God. Okay, let's carry on. So, John 14, 26. But the helper. Oh. According to the Amplified, the Comforter, the Advocate, the Intercessor, Counselor, Strengthener, Standby, the Holy Spirit. Whom the Father will send in my name, He will represent me, act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. He will help you remember everything that I have told you. We've talked about that a lot. Is there a list of the seven? Mm, yes. So, Holy Spirit, a Standby, Strengthener, Counselor, Counselor. Intercessor, advocate, helper, comforter. Interesting. The seven spirits of God. And in two, three places, these seven names are given to the Holy Spirit. Amazing. God confirming His word. Now what I'm saying is, I'm saying hallelujah in all circumstances. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you. What are we saying? The uniqueness of the Holy Spirit. My brother, my sister, please. Don't put the Holy Spirit like this in your mind in a box. You never can put the Holy Spirit in a box. But in your mind, you can give him no room except this. Because this is your interpretation. This is your revelation of who he is. You don't understand the deep depth and the richness of the glory and the wisdom of God found in the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2 also says... No man understands God. Only the spirit understands the depth, the richness, the, the, the value of, of who he really is. And no man understands the man except the spirit that is in the man. Your soul with your emotions, your opinions, think you understand who you really are. That your soul cannot understand who you are. Hello, hello, hello. You must catch that one. You think with your intellect you know who you are. You don't know who you are. If God doesn't reveal to you who you are, you know nothing. Tell your neighbor, you know nothing. 
Now say it with attitude. You know nothing. <laughs> if it's not through the Spirit of God. <laughs> okay? So please, don't think you know anything. Because the fool is the guy that thinks he knows a lot. But actually what he's saying is, his foolishness will be revealed. But the wisdom of God will be revealed through the Spirit. Through God who created you. And in your spirit, he has placed the fullness of God. In your spirit, you have the mind of Christ. You do hold the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of God in your spirit according to the word. So you have the mind of Christ. You can think the way he thinks. You can see what he is seeing. The seven eyes of God is in your spirit. Why? The spirit of God is living in you. Let's say the seven eyes of the Father is in me. Because the Holy Spirit is in you. But you know, you can decide, I will ignore him. And I will not learn how to see the way Father sees everything. I will have my perspective and I will pray that he must come, he must come, he must come, he must come. And what he must do according to what I see. And for that Christian, life is very, very hard. Not the other way around, it's just... just What's that word? Roses, a rose garden. No, it's not just the rose garden. Not at all. That's not what we say. But you need to come to understand how to relate with Holy Spirit. Like as we said, with Jesus Christ, you will relate to him as the good shepherd, as the light of the world, as the door of the sheep for opportunities, etc. So with the Holy Spirit, how does he want to reveal himself as the standby? Stand by, is he will be with you forever. Now I can pray, God, please be with me in this situation. It's okay that you pray that. But why? Why are you praying it? You don't believe when he promised that he will be with you. Maybe it's help me to focus on you who are always with me. Help me not to forget. Help me not to think of first... The presence of cha the challenge, the presence of the problem, the presence of the crisis, the presence of the, that. But help me to focus on your presence that will always be with you, me, because you will never leave me, you will never forsake me. And that is how the Holy Spirit, as standby, will lead you how to be involved with him. Are you with me? But if I don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, as standby, I will ask, please, Lord, come and help me. Or, no, sorry, please come and be with me. Come and be with me. It's good to invite, but actually inviting is me in like in worship, telling my soul to stand this side so that the truth can rule. It's actually me saying I choose to focus on the one that is actually with me. But my experience with all the other rubbish that is also with me, I choose to to focus away from that and I choose to honor the one that is with me. You are here? It's like, give us today our daily bread. Like we said in the past. It's not like, you better ask for your daily bread, otherwise tomorrow you will starve. But if you don't ask, you will not get. Yes, but my Heavenly Father knows everything that we need. That Mosi, what is a Mosi? That sparrow. That sparrow, he didn't ask tonight for, for, for bread and the next day. And because the, the bird didn't ask, so he will not get. Oh, my father knows. If he knows what that sparrow needs, how much more for you? The word says a little of faith. So, what am I doing when I say, Give us today our daily bread. I'm positioning myself in prayer to say, I need you. I'm dependent on you. I need you, Lord. Are you with me? So a lot of prayer is my positioning before God. And now it's the same. How will you relate to the one that will always stand by you? Always be with you. So part of it is, forgive me for being so aware of the presence of temptation, of the presence of the weakness, of the presence of the, of the success, of the presence of my opinion, of the presence of my performance, my, uh, the presence of what they think of me. Instead of not being aware of your presence with me. 
So I need to not just fight that thing, I just choose to focus on it. When you are tra uh, training, you're not fighting. You are trained. So God wants to train me like he's the coach. And he wants to train me how to understand how I'm with the Holy Spirit. How the Holy Spirit is with me. Amen. So that when you listen to a sermon and it's the second service and we're going beyond 43 minutes, 16 seconds, then I start to see. Some, when you get a bigger smile, I know you're sleeping. Some when their eyes go down, they go like, beware. What am I saying? Stand by. Allow the Holy Spirit in his uniqueness to be the strengthener. What are we talking about? Oh, I have, I have a relationship with God. Uh, God, give me strength. Thank you. And that's all relationship that I have with Holy Spirit as strengthener. Can you please go and ask this holiday, God, help me to have a unique relationship with the Holy Spirit. That I will honor his uniqueness and the way that he wants to reveal himself to me. I was in a certain church, uh, first year medical school. And in that holiday, for some reason, I wasn't baptized in the spirit, nothing. But in the holiday in Heilbronn, I said this before. In that holiday in Heilbronn, I just felt this need to go to that dam. a very smallish dam there in Heil, at Heilbronn. And every night, go there like for a week or two. And I would go and sit there. And there's like four sentences I would say. And one would be, this year I want to come to know you, Holy Spirit, please. And I would stand up and I would walk home. I've never done something like that in that way. But I just felt to do that. That next year, I was baptized. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, received the calling, left the medical school, and bursary, everything, and went full-time into ministry. Boom! In that one year. Not because I prayed that, no. But Holy Spirit wanted me to position myself. And Holy Spirit prepared me for what God wants to do in that year. And in the prayer, He brought my mind into a certain focus. Hello? Because the Holy Spirit is going to help me what I'm supposed to pray. And through prayer I will be strengthened. Because it was a prayer. No, because the Holy Spirit was in the prayer. Because the Holy Spirit led the prayer. Okay. Strengthener. So start to speak with all these facets. Start to speak what the word is saying. How you will find strength through the Holy Spirit. Okay. Start to believe that. Start to understand that. How must I make sure that I walk away from my own strength? Not by power, not by might, but by the Holy Spirit. Power and might is a strength. Not by my strength. Not by my anger. Not by my capacity. He's actually talking all about strength. But if he says not by power, might, then actually you can say, but by the strength of the Holy Spirit. But for that, I need to surrender. Now you go and ask Holy Spirit, how must I have a relationship more with you? How must I release my strength, my power, my, my might? How must I release it? Especially if I feel I, I know how to do this. You've done it this way. It worked this way. But it was not God. At one stage, a lot of things happened in a type of revival. And people would uh, line up and... and uh, a lot of guys that gave their lives to Christ and I would just walk and boom, 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 do this and they boom, boom, boom and some manifesting with demons coming out and some this and this. And just another night where a lot of guys were there again and I went on and this one guy, maybe I talked about this before. Who will remember the story? One, two, thank you. And I laid hands on the guy and he fell and after he fell he stood up Stood up straight, he looked, stood up and he looked me in the eye and he walked off. And from that moment, I couldn't breathe. I was like, <sighs> from that moment, he looked me in the eye and he walked off. And later, I was like crying because God must, 
what's happening? Am I going to die or what? I found the two churches, one in Bloomfield and one in Elbron. And I said, guys, you need to pray. This guy, I, something happened in the spirit. He put something on me or I don't know how this happened. I couldn't do the drilling, whatever, in the army. I was in basics, you know, you must go and march. Not to draw, I know. That is when you do get water. Thanks, where I can see you feel yellow luister. Good. In the marching, there was the corporal looked at me and thought I'm crazy, but he allowed me to stand one side because he could see I cannot breathe. You know the amazing, 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 amazing thing in that evening when I was that evening only crying and I felt like I'm 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 beyond. The moment I started to pray in tongues, I could breathe. It was like... I was so amazed at the power of praying in tongues. My brother, my sister, please. And it was like through the Holy Spirit and the strength was just there. And that night I fell asleep somewhere, I don't know what, and the next morning it was gone. And later, and later, when I had a conversation with the Satanist in that, it was in the army camp, in that army camp, I said to him, did you guys send somebody to me? He laughed and said, yes. You know why I fell for it? Because when you know how to do something, and the anointing can flow, and, and you're successful in it, I can just carry on. But there is a scripture, do not lay hands on hastily. So I know how it works, and, and let's pray just for the people, and the devils get out, and somebody explaining the spirit, and this and this, and all, all that nice stuff. But I'm not dependent on him anymore. I need to stay dependent on God. I need to understand how I will be strengthened through his guidance. Not by power, not by might, not by manifestation of power, not by, but by the guidance of the spirit. But whatever he says, that goes and nothing else. You are here? Strengthen a counselor. Oh, you can receive a lot of counsel. And it, some of it can be very perfect, perfect, perfect counsel. You will see in the Old Testament, even how these guys, yay, man, they wanted some counsel from some chochas, some, some demonic forces, even the kings of Israel that went. Who was the king? They sent to, to go to that auntie, and then God spoke to Elijah. Come here, Pierre. Hey, man. Give me the corner skin. Okay, bottom line, his fault. You remember that king? He sent 50 people to go to this medium, to this source that will give him counsel. God was so serious about taking counsel from demonic stuff, and today, the enemy is, is very clever. That counsel comes through the TV, through this, through that, through the, through the syllabus at school, through what people say, how the, the norm is supposed to be. How you supposed to be with people in the workplace. How you supposed to identify with, with his identity or his, her, it, him, hot, the donkey identity, whatever that guy wants to be, he can be it. Hello? But you need to hear from God. Is there no here? What do I say, Jolene? Counseling. Thank you, Tani. Oh, you didn't mean to open Okay. And uh, so they want to seek counsel. They didn't want to do their own thing. They wanted to seek counsel, but it was through a medium that was not accurate from God. So God spoke to Elijah, remember? I said, there's 50 guys going for counsel. And he came to them, where are you think you're going? Whew, fire from heaven, boom, all 50 gone. But the king still want the counsel. So the king go again, and he sends another 50 with a commander. God speak to Elijah again. He says, there's another 50 that he sent. Elijah come again, and says, uh, where you think you're going? Boom, fire from heaven, 50 gone. Okay, so, we know. All right, the king decided he's very desperate. He wants counsel. He sent another 50. 
God spoke to Elijah. Elijah was carrying a coat down and said, where do you think you're going? The commander says, well, please, 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 Mr. Prophet, um, just come to, with me to the king. It's not me, it's the king. Okay. No fire from heaven. He, with the 50, went back to the king. He told the king, because you thought of going, you will die. Boom. And he died, the king. Sure. Don't think of getting counsel <laughs> from rubbish. Not supposed to. Are you here? Get your thoughts in line. Just don't think, yeah, oh, yeah, that's very good counsel. You can get a lot of good counsel from hell and from demons. Even like when the temptation from, from the devil came to Jesus in the, in the, in the wilderness. It was like a counsel. You are hungry. You have needs. Let me counsel you with a scripture. So somebody come to you and you have needs. You have challenges. You feel hungry or you feel this, this. And you can get counsel through scriptures that the devil gave you. <laughs> if you don't know the perspective. Because it's also written. Every time that Jesus taught the enemy. Hey. You have certain abilities. You can do this, man. You can do this job. You can do that. You can do that. Oh, you can, you can climb the wind pump. What's even pump in Engels? Windmill, I said so. And, uh, and fix this thing, all that. You can, but make sure from the Holy Spirit. Hello? My nephew, he was also new in, in Namibia. But he fell from, from, the, from there, from the top. With a, just a, what's a rugwind? Yeah, that thing. Fell and he was dead. But, but he's a skillful farmer. He, his dad, farmer, and uh, he's just, and his two brothers, very skillful. They just knew exactly what to do. But still. But I need to hear from God. I need to have this counsel of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are those who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, but walk in the counsel of the counselor the holy spirit so so you need to allow his counsel even though you feel you want to say something you keep silent until the holy spirit tells you to say and what you say because in the counseling let me say my sister there's a certain thing that she's going through i can tell her a hundred things from the word i can tell her a hundred things from the word that could help her but that's not necessarily the counsel of the Holy Spirit. That doctor, uh, there's somebody, and, and he can give her 75 medicine. No, he just gave her all the, that pala, 75 different ones. They can all work. But he's stupid. He, he cannot drink all those medicine. You know a lot. You can go into the chemist. You can go into the pharmacy. And because all that medicine, 3,724 of them, different ones, they can help people. No. Mm. But just go in there and start one side of the pharmacy and start to drink all the pills. First thing that will leave you is your brain. Even the day that you entered there. What are we saying? That's stupid. Who will do that? Who will walk into a pharmacy and just start to get the, the pills from the rack and just start to drink it? But why then, tomorrow, I look at the word, but I don't know what it means. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm drinking, I'm taking that, what is from God. But who said you must take all that medicine? That medicine maybe is not from the devil. Uh, it's not from the devil. You're going to die in that. If you just get in there and say, no, this doesn't work for me. I'm eating the word, but it doesn't work. Because you get the prescription from the Holy Spirit. Because he's the counselor. He will counsel you into the word of God. Or oh, what you need today. There are 79 antibiotics in one day. With a triple doses. Heck. I don't know what's that in English. No, crazy is not strong enough. Mar, okay. Stupidioleus. Okay. So, what are we saying, my brother, my sister? If, as long as the devil can in, in, 
encourage you. No. Opposite? Oh, what's my thought? Decourage you. And that you don't spend time in the Word because it doesn't work for you. It doesn't really work. But when you come to the Word of God, not just for the Word to strengthen you, like somebody is encouraged by a certain Word, not just to realize how God is in all facets with you, but when you go to the Word, you get in there and God's going to give you a prescription. There will be some counsel that you receive. What to cut, what not to, where to do, where not to do. Are you with me? We're talking about the uniqueness of the Holy Spirit. That we're going to learn how to walk with Him. Intercessor. Intercessor. Okay. You have a situation. You have a situation. You feel you need to pray. And you're praying for your situation. But Holy Spirit is not in it. Because... At that moment, God wants to reveal himself through his spirit as an intercessor. You have your situation. But right now, God wants you to pray for Lubumbashi. What's the anaplex name? Lubumbashi. Yeah. What's the plaque is that name here? Lubumbashi. Is that not in Congo? Say it. Yeah. Don't look at me as if I'm stupid. Okay, and at that moment you just get that word, God, whoever that is or whatever that is, you don't even know it's a city in Congo at that moment. But Holy Spirit at that moment wanted to reveal, when you were uh, uh, available to pray, when you were available to come to God and you want to open your mouth because you have a, a relationship with the Holy Spirit and you respect His uniqueness, you were open to hear that you were supposed to pray for Lubumbashi. God, help the people there and whatever. Let your spirit be on that place. And blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> the intercessor, Holy Spirit intercessors working through you. You seek the kingdom, God will sort that other things out. He knows what you need. You didn't have to see even at that stage speak to him because he right there wanted you to be an intercessor with the Holy Spirit. Are you here? So intercessor is interceding most of the time for somebody else. Most of the time for somebody else. But sometimes you have your needs. Now the intercessor, when you have relationship with the, with the Holy Spirit as intercessor, and not just the one that must fulfill your needs, make all the stones bread. But you allow him as intercessor, you can even intercede for things in your life because here i come with my situation god i'm gonna fire john dean because he's giving me a whatever and meanwhile you're not supposed to pray about supposed to pray you about you and your john dean you're supposed blah, supposed to intercede god help me give me give me strength yes that thing happened in my life and i know john dean is the thorn in the flesh but god i want to deal in with the flesh not to get the thorn out but to get the flesh in line oh i mean are you with me hello are you still here? So we are put and placed in one another's lives with purpose. You won't believe it. God does not waste time. God is amazingly the cleverest of any form of clever, cleverness. They could be masterly. He can put things together and everything for the benefit for him and his kingdom. So when people are in your face, you, you must know what you must pray. Not for that to change. But first of all, for things to change, yeah. And then you need intercession. That means you are desperate for certain things to change in your life. And sometimes God is desperate for certain things to change in your life. And he will bring something in front of you. And he's not going to take it away because he brought that thing in front of you. So that you can intercede and bring yourself in desperation before God to change. In the midst of that thing in front of you. Relationship with Holy Spirit as intercessor. You are still here? Advocate. 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 Okay. 
My brother, my sister, even with yourself, there's an accuser of the brethren, the Satan himself. And you can so easily, with right and wrong, accuse somebody else what they've done wrong. And that's why you can take your heart away with God. You have the right to take your heart away from God until that guy confesses. I need to sort it out with that guy, my heart. And only after we sort it out, then my heart can be good. No, no, you need to sort your life out with Christ. You don't have a relationship with Christ in that facet there. Because... God, I'm sorry, even if you said I must forgive, so that you can forgive me, no. I will not honor you it. I will not honor that scripture. If that guy and me, if we didn't sort it out first, your word will not work in my life. Finish. And you must understand that. You will never say something like that. But we've set a certain pattern sometimes in our life, in the past, not in the future anymore, but in the past, that... If me and that man don't first sort things out and have a good conversation, pray for one another and forgive one another, then it's not sorted. I'm not saying you must not go to your brother or your sister. No, you must. Because you must learn how the relationship must work. Why? Because you're supposed to walk in the spirit that there's a unity in the spirit. Because you respect what God said. That you are brothers. If you like one another or not. If you must have two different heavens like the auntie said or not. You do that because God said it and because you respect the unity in the spirit. You go and sit so that you can work it out. How will we not be so oversensitive with one another anymore? How can we go to a next level in our relationship so that God is honored through the relationship? But you sort it out for you to forgive that person. It's just I choose to respect the word of God. Finish. He said forgive. When somebody did something wrong. Go to him, and if he says he's sorry, then forgive him. <laughs> Nothing like that. That's absolute deception from hell. I know it's not so easy. I know it's not so easy. But <sighs> the simplicity of the word can set me free. Because if Satan sees that you can be thrown over by things that people do easily... Oh man, he will send the people. He will send the people. And he will send the people. And they will make sure that you are irritated. Make sure that you are down. Make sure that your problem is the people. No, God will help us. Where are we now? Advocate. Advocate, yeah. So I can be with an accuser about others I have an issue with. And there's a court case in my heart with them. Yeah, this was not good. Yeah, this one. And I need to know who's right, who's wrong. Yes, who's right, who's wrong? Go and burn in hell. Because we were wrong. And it was not right that Jesus died on the cross. But Jesus did die on the cross because of the love of God. Even though we were wrong and not him. So at the tree of knowledge of good and evil with the snake. Get away there. Get away there. So I'm standing on this side in the courtroom with the accuser. Even with yourself, that you accuse yourself for certain things, you're hiring yourself, you're then in a performance, you must, I must do this right, because, uh, you know, Dunay is my boss, and Dunay is sometimes hard, and sometimes in trouble with Dunay, so I will just do what I'm supposed to do. That's okay, but you're standing with the accuser of the brethren. This pastor telling Jolene to do some things, now she's doing it so that she's not in trouble with me. She's standing with the accuser of the brethren. She's not standing with Holy Spirit as advocate. Because she does, not, she does not want to be in trouble with me. She must get a relationship with the Holy Spirit as advocate. Why? So that the advocate will say, you are right and the pastor is wrong. No. <laughs> That's the snake at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That is the accuser of the brethren. You stand here on this side with the advocate. But you know with the advocate... That advocate, when you are accused of certain things, what is one thing that the advocate expects? You will be honest with him. You better be honest with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to be honest with you as the advocate. And the Holy Spirit says, the word says the Holy Spirit will convict us of sin. Not condemn us about the sin, but bring conviction about the sin. That means now I need some blatant honesty and allow the Holy Spirit to do it in me and I need to be utterly honest with the Holy Spirit I cannot deceive myself in, in justification how I'm right you've been there 
Only me. And then you type of justifying yourself, but you're justifying yourself in your head. You have not even spoken to that person. You have not spoken. Spokenly spoken to that person. But it's in your head because you're resisting the advocate. You're resisting the Holy Spirit. That's why you have the fight in your head. That's why you are justifying because you must fight the voice of the Holy Spirit, the advocate. That if you want to trust him, if the advocate must trust you in this situation, honesty, honesty, honesty. Blatant honesty with him. And he will give strategy. He will say, we're not going to speak about this. I'm not talking about cover it up. I'm not, no, we're not going to. This is not an issue to be addressed. There is no issue in that area. This is our strategy. This is how we're going to do it. That's how we're going to do it. Not with anger, not with a twist. What's twist? Ach, niemand, weet niemand wat twist in Engels nie. Fighting, yeah, type of a fighting. You mean, they, they have an issue with one another, a twist, they, they have a fight. They have a quarrel, quarrel, quarrel. They, have, they are quarreling. We're not going to quarrel in the court case. We're not going to quarrel. We're not going to have a fight in this way. No, not the quarreling. We're going to stay calm. And then we're going to lift out these three points. And that is Holy Spirit as advocate. But you have a fight with people. You have the fight with yourself. You have a fight. You're not allowing Holy Spirit as advocate. Come on, man. And even other people, they are doing wrong, and you feel this was wrong, you've been belittled, or you've been this, or been that, you've been uh, whatever. Get out to the Holy Spirit as advocate and hear what is his strategy according to the word. When me and my wife, when we had in the past, now the past few years, never a quarrel. But um, when we had, why are you laughing? And... Uh, and when we would be at the moment that we realize we, we're going to say now nasty things to one another. And sometimes we got it right that we say, stop, time out. And that means each one go to God. And God never, never, unfortunately said, I'm right and she's wrong. He would always challenge you about something that you need to be honest about in this court case. And he would always take me to the bench of the advocate and not to the bench of the accuser, the devil. You allow God when you have this court case in your head or in your heart with somebody. If you will not ignore the Holy Spirit but respect to his, he will take you on this side with the advocate where you will have compassion for people. Advocate, helper. He wants to help you. You know, when uh, Kids are small sometimes, it's okay. But you know that phase of actual shelf. Actual shelf. I will do it myself. And then they eat themselves. They don't want your, your help, but what a mess, you know, with that playing with the food. And uh, only my child, maybe. But um, yo, can be a mess. Now, sometimes we are like that children, but you know, like a father would allow it up to a certain point. The father will make sure there's not a sharp knife when he's going to do it himself. So he's not, you are in sin, in total sin, so I'm going to give you a sharp knife so that you can learn how not to do it on your own. No, 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 no. But in the process, the helper will not leave you. But God is so ready, so ready, so ready to help you, my brother, my sister. He's so ready to help you. That's mercy. Grace and mercy. Grace, God's enablement to you. Mercy is practical help to you. That's why Paul in the, in the letters to many churches says, May the grace of God, the mercy, grace and mercy and peace many times. Those three that he blessed the church with. May you be blessed with God's enablement, the God that is enabling you. May you be blessed with God's practical help, His mercy. May you be blessed by His guidance and that your heart and mind is protected with His supernatural peace. Amen. That's a good place for amen. Helper. He wants to help you, but you... 
can be so strong in your own strength and your might that you don't know how to allow the helper. Because we were made that if I can do that, I don't want to. My sister has a very unique relationship with, with God. Let me say it like that. But she would say, no, no. I think God has enough things to do. I cannot bother him about this now. Sometimes I just keep quiet. I don't know. She knows the truth. But, um, yeah. But sometimes we have that type of thing. We will never say that. But we just do it instead of, God, what are you saying? Frustrated with many things. Many things. Guys, I don't know if I said it. But with so many things that opened up in my life in a very intense, successful way. Most of the time. I've heard wrong. I was nearly right. But I had to change. Nearly right. And then certain adjustments. Certain adjustments. Certain adjustments. I mean, our famous uh, testimony. Nearly right. Seven actors throwing a tantrum, man. Throwing a tantrum. Why you don't give me, Lord, seven actors for 1.3 million instead of 1.5 million? Nearly right. God is waiting. He wants to help me. When will my son stop that tantrum? <laughs> It's just next to, just next to, told the angels, just next to, 215 hectares for free. But he is freaking out about why not 1.3 million instead of 1.5 million for 7 hectares. And they have the faith and trust that I will hear the Holy Spirit to, to get into a place, even with my mind in a total wrong direction. I go to City Planner to find out how can I build Christian school camp, to, uh, camp uh, grounds and, and church on seven hectares please find out for me and by coincidence just for interesting sake find out whose 215 hectares are is this place just for interesting sake guys go with God but no that's so many times so many times you're not going to be accurate but you're on your way into accuracy and if you stay teachable Stay teachable. Stay open. And don't defend what you've heard from God. You will see. You will see how God opens up what you need. Kriari, when I said, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to establish. Uh, the leader said, no. I went to go back. They said, no. Five times I went back. No, 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 no. From touring to 90% to... Uh, uh, Touring in 10% training to 60% to 50% uh, training and 50% touring to, to uh, nine months training and three months touring to one month touring at the end of the, uh, the year. Not one of that. Just training. I started with 12, 12 months touring. What am I allowed to do? Totally the opposite of what I believe I'm supposed to do. That's how we started Creare. But God placed me with those leaders. So, the good word is shut up, submit. And, yeah, and later, everything that I saw became a reality. But I, I must stay open. I must stay under the protection of people that are discipling me. Go forth, make disciples. You have, don't go and dare do that if you are not allowing somebody to disciple you. Otherwise, his own kingdom. Okay. We're supposed to stop. What's the time? I don't know. Whoa! Your fault. Helper. Comforter. 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 It's not achsistoch. Shame. Oh. You can feel comforted. It's that guy that was nasty. You were right and he was wrong. And now you feel better. And we're going to get him back. And for some people, that's the way there's comfort and that justice is served. Look at the walls. Look at Israel. Look at a lot of stuff. Oh, man, we cannot say anything about it. We can pray for the churches to rise up in all the nations and to make the difference and show Christ in the midst of disruption. Amen. Amen. So, but in all of that, what am I saying? Comfort. Comfort, comfort is not... Trying to find out that you are right and the other person is wrong. Who felt very really comforted when you, feel, when you realize I'm wrong and he's right? 
Ha! There's no way. No way. But comforting has nothing to do with who's right and who's wrong. That's the accuser or the brethren, the devil. But it has to do with a healing that God wants to bring here. Not ach, she's doch shame, peace. No, it's a healing that God wants to bring. Blessed are those who comfort, because they will be comforted. Ne? The scripture says the, the Beatitudes. So what are we saying? God wants to bring a healing in your emotions, a healing in that. And many times it's in ways that you will not understand his strategy. But get a relationship with the Holy Spirit as comforter and you will understand comfort in your life so that you can bring that comfort from God to people around you and comfort to the nations, comfort to, to, to people that's going through hell out there. But get a relationship then with Holy Spirit as comfort and say, Holy Spirit, show me who you are as comforter. Now, with each one of the seven, come on guys, leaders, you are fired if you don't do that. I say that as comfort. Um, with each one of the seven, get some five scriptures and say, God, speak to me about Holy Spirit as comforter. And don't you go and find a scripture and say, I don't understand what it means. Why are you quitting in the presence of God? So, last example was like uh, this one time I got a scripture. No, more than once I got a scripture. And then I asked a specific question and the, and the answer is, and Aaron, the, the, the father of Pete, the father of Chris, the father of John, the father of... And that's all that the scripture said. Now what the heck? What does that mean? It's nothing to do with what I asked. And one time I asked God, I said, God, what now? And by coincidence, I, I, I focused on the Holy Spirit to speak to me. And I said to God, God, what are you saying in this? And God answered me. And he talked about generations and the blessings of generations. How through, even in the ancestors, how they prayed for certain things. And if you don't honor, but just judge or criticize what previous generations did. How can you receive what they've prayed for that is like legacy into you? And that's why you need to understand how to pray for your children and their children. Oh man, after about a half an hour, everything God said just from that scripture, this, the father or that, the father or that, the father or that. I was so encouraged by the strengthener. I was so having, getting counsel from the counselor. Hello? I experienced him as comforter in a situation where I didn't know what to do. Can we allow God and can we honor the Holy Spirit in his uniqueness and say, next year especially, Lord, we want to come to know you into the uniqueness of who you are. Amen? And don't despise the day where you see the the beauty in small situations and small things around you and honoring for that. Last verse, but we're not going to preach about that. Don't fear. Isaiah 11. Then a shoot, the Messiah, will spring forth from the stock of Jesse, David's father, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The branch is Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on Jesus. On him. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of strength, the spirit of knowledge, and the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. Oh, the seven eyes of the Father. The seven eyes of the Father will be on Jesus through the sevenfold spirit of God here on earth. And then he says, and he will delight, Jesus will delight in the respect for the Father. Jesus will delight, he will find delight in their respect, in the, in the awesome respect that he had for his Father. And he will not judge by what his, his eyes, the eyes of Jesus. What he see? He will not judge by what he's seeing. Jesus will not judge by what he's seeing. Nor make decisions by what his ears hear. He will judge according to the seven eyes of the Father. Not even Jesus will judge according to what he, as Jesus, would see. He will only judge. He will only go according to the eyes of the Father. I challenge you. I charge you. 
come to know Holy Spirit, the uniqueness of who He is, so that you can see what your Father is seeing and only go according to that. Thank you, Father, for who you are. Oh God, we have a desire to see what you see. God, I pray that you will open the eyes of our heart. Forgive us for seeing so many times the right and wrong. Forgive us for seeing according to a spirit of negativity. Forgive us for seeing according to our success and failures and this and that, Lord. Oh God, forgive us for that. And lead us into that what is right according to your, your heart, Lord. I pray that you will touch every man, every woman in this place. Pray that you will touch every man, every woman in this place, Lord. And that they will understand the eyes, the seven eyes of the Father that is in their spirits and how to see through that. I pray for a hunger, a hunger for the Holy Spirit to come to know the uniqueness of the Spirit of God. So that we will stand more and more amazed at who you are. The beauty of who you are. Thank you, Lord, that you come and do that for every man, every woman in this place. I pray that in Jesus' name and that name alone. Amen.